To celebrate 200 years of the enduring work of Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, the Museum of Copenhagen has invited the public to contribute their own objects and stories to a precious collection of ephemera from Kierkegaard's personal life. We are trying to think of these very everyday objects that we have from Søren Kierkegaard, from the keys to his home, to his mother's wedding ring, to his father's rings. We take them, we interpret them as objects of love, as objects that carry that whole um, reference to the relationships that he had with the world around him. The exhibition has nine object cases arranged in a circle. Inside each case are two portrait-mounted 42-inch monitors behind darkened glass. The inner circle case objects are from Kierkegaard's life and illustrate one of his themes about the nature of love, with extracts from his writings scrolling up the screen. The outer circle cases hold objects contributed by the public, which symbolise for them that aspect of love in their lives. In the exhibition, we supplement these original San Kyrgyz objects with objects that people bring us today from their everyday lives, from what I sometimes think of as the sort of emotional museums that most of us have in our own homes, in drawers, on shelves, in the grass, in the basement, objects that commemorate or carry the memories of specific periods in our lives or people bring us the most amazing things um, really sort of heart heartbreaking uh, objects um, testifying to what Sean Kierko would think about as the love that lasts beyond death or transcends death a woman who um, carefully kept um, in some ways the whole infrastructure of her marriage um, to a man they ran a shop together and she kept the whole infrastructure of the shop intact. She also created a pillowcase out of her husband's pajamas so she kept sleeping with him you know way after his death. The museum holds public workshops where contributors can accession their objects into the collection database and record video stories about them using an Android app developed for the purpose. It actually symbolised my relationship with my dad, given that he bought it for me. Part of the shifting paradigm, you also want to be able to empower people to actually participate in these fundamental museum processes. So with the digital technologies, we can enable people to register their own objects, to categorise them, to tell to actually, from themselves, say, this is why it's important to me. Their objects are then mounted into the exhibition's cases. Tablets mounted in nearby stands carry another custom-built app that enables visitors to select an object to explore, triggering media replays on the screens inside the cases. This is actually a process that we are giving back to people uh, rather than reserving it for the museum's categorization. The app also enables visitors to leave their own comments and stories. And again, we can create a dialogue not just between the people who give the objects to the museum, but also to the audience who come to the exhibition. It's really interesting to observe these processes where people bring objects in. Some people choose to register everything in writing. And then you will see particularly the younger people who obviously do videos as their easy way of recording the history. And this technology, of course, allows both of these modes with the same ease and they also both of them work quite well in the exhibition. Affordable technology is a feature of the exhibition with the amazing $50 Raspberry Pi computers powering the 18 exhibition case video display screens. The cost-effective Android tablets are housed in stands designed to allow them to be easily removed for object registration sessions and educational program use. 
All interactive devices are connected by internet to the exhibition database on a remote server, which also houses the exhibition content management system, accessible on the curator's desktop. I think it has worked. I think um, there's a, a gap between the official love ideal and the way that people live their everyday lives. And that's an interesting gap. What fills this gap? Is it love between parents and their children? Is it love of siblings? Is it friendship? Is it colleagues that you work with? Where is the emotional meaning in people's everyday lives in the 21st century in the urban environment? And that's really some of the questions that we're exploring here.